I'm obsessed with Giannis. I, but I think I think we could appreciate Giannis's mindset without looking at it as a as a negative if somebody takes pride and pursues a scoring title. <clears throat> You know, like it's okay to it's okay to look at it the way Giannis is, but it's also okay to want it. And there's certainly a lot of prestige winning the scoring title, which Joel Embiid has done, as you know, Vincent Goodwill, um, first center with 30 points per game and under 40 minutes per game, most 40 10 games since the merger off that monster game against Indiana in the in the season, uh, first center to lead the league in scoring since Shaquille O'Neal. Um, we've asked you about MVP every which way, Vinny. So I'll ask you a quick one. Not at the regular season is in the books. Just how close do you think this vote is going to be? <clears throat> do you think Joel Embiid has a realistic shot just based on the temperature that you've been able to take from your peers, other voters? I don't know if it's going to be as close as we might think it should be. You know, we I see it as a three person race and I haven't submitted my ballot yet. I got another seven and a half hours before I do so. <laughs> um, but, and I still haven't made up my mind. I'm leaning a certain way, but I, I'm not really sure. And I, I tend to think that it's going to be more, I'm gonna say lopsided is the word, but it will be a little more decisive. And I do think that he is deserving of more than just a little consideration, more than just, you know, a tip of the cap. I think. He has an excellent case considering what he's playing with, who he's not playing with, some of the team drama that has gone on this year. It, it might be just unfortunate that he has a great year and doesn't win it, but it's not an indictment. There's plenty of great players who have never won MVP or never even finished in the top three. It doesn't mean they're any less great. But I do think he has a case, and I do think that a lot of those historic numbers will wind up standing up through the test of time, even if he doesn't get the MVP award this season. I think it's going to be somewhere, even if he does win it, we're going to look at him and say he's a fraud. I think he's the real deal, not just for now, but for the future. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you said that, Michael, because I know you were concerned about giving it to a player that gets exposed in the playoffs. Not that Embiid yeah. will get exposed, <clears throat> but it feels like at this point, that's not an upset for me. Like, I feel like Embiid's going out in the first round because Matisse Thibault got one dose and thought that was enough. Not of Johnson & Johnson, but thought that one dose was sufficient. Now, since he's not vaccinated, <clears throat> he can't play it potentially three games in Toronto. Given the way James Harden has looked from a shooting standpoint, he's facilitating well, but from a shooting standpoint, given what Thibault means to their defense, given the way Pascal Siakam has owned Philadelphia this year, given how good the Raptors have looked of late, Vinny, I'll put it this way. The upset would be a Philadelphia one. Like, I'd be shocked if Toronto did not win this 4-5 huh. matchup. Wow. Wow. That's, go that's strong. You went strong to the paint yeah. on that one. Do, uh, no, no, not, not. That's cap. As, as the kids say, is that cap, Vinny? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I, I don't think it's cap at all. Uh, I think the Raptors... That's my first time saying that in a sentence. That's funny. <laughs> might, might, might be the last time you say in the sentence too. That, that might have been probably. That might have been a surefire. We old yeah. sign when yeah. you start taking yeah. the lingo and it don't sound good. Rolling off the tip, yeah. rolling off the tip of your tongue. Not. You know it what I mean? Not. But I, I think I'll say this for Matisse Thybul. Just before we even go into the basketball, he's at least willing to stand on his decision and not turn it into some greater discussion or be fake woke and everything else or quote unquote fake woke, whatever that means. He's not trying to turn himself into a larger symbol. He said, you know what? This is the decision I made. I'm willing to accept the consequences, even if it means a playoff series. All right, cool. If your team is willing to, you know, respect that and everything else, considering the goal that's supposed to be in front of them, so be it. Like he doesn't he didn't sound like a quack as much as a lot of these other people did. Not I may not necessarily agree with his ideology and saying that it has to be 100% for me to take the vaccine. I, I think he's a little misguided there, but now you go to the basketball part. They don't have the margin for error. That's your best perimeter defender against a team that, while they don't have the greatest scores in the world, they got a bunch of long and rangy dudes that you're going to have to have everything at your disposal. And you don't have a weapon that you can't replace. There's no, you know what I mean? There's no replication on that roster that can do what Matisse Thibault does. Like he's in strong consideration for my all defensive team for that very reason. So, and when you look at the dependable players on Philly's roster versus the dependable players on Toronto's roster, plus the fact that Nick Nurse seems to be a wizard of a coach, 
I'm not sure that you can reasonably pick the Philadelphia 76ers with the same confidence that you can pick any of the other top seeds so far. Even if you were to pick Miami against Brooklyn, that's the way it turned out to be, I would still be more confident, you know, picking Miami over Brooklyn than I would be if I were picking Philadelphia over Toronto. And that's a huge indictment of this entire grand experiment. And largely, a lot of that falls on James Harden before it even gets to Matisse Thibault. Let me ask you this, Vinny. I mean, uh, th that's one of them, that Philadelphia-Toronto matchup. I, I agree with you guys. I think it's going to be great. I'd give the slight edge to Philly still, but we'll see what happens. How about any other series in either conference where you look at it and you say, man, that is a, that's a seven-game series. Just from afar, looking at it just before the games are played, you look at some <laughs> of these matchups and go, oh, that's going to that's be tight. I think it's easy to say that Golden State and Dallas, not that Golden State and Denver, would be a knockdown drag out first round series in large part because Golden State's greatest weakness is Denver's strength. The bigs, or that big, that dude in Nikola Jokic, and there's nobody that they have that can guard him. They don't have the size. You can't put Draymond Green on Nikola Jokic for 40 minutes a game. You'll wear down Draymond Green, and it still won't help. As great as Draymond Green is defensively, there's such a distinct height and physical advantage there that sometimes it's just a bad matchup. And if we don't know what Steph Curry is going to look like when he comes back, he depends on rhythm and timing. And if he hasn't been able to do basketball activity for the better part of the last month or maybe five or six weeks, I don't know how you can reasonably expect him to come back and hit the ground running, even against a, a Denver team that you're looking at and say, that's a one man band. Even if you're not expecting Jamal Murray to come back and look like himself or even come back at all, I won't say they're on upset alert, but that is something to me that looks like a, se a series of intrigue. In addition to, let's just say, if it's Milwaukee and Brooklyn in the 2-7 or Boston and Brooklyn in the 2-7, you know, whatever it is, that is going to be an interesting series if Brooklyn gets in. Although I wouldn't be afraid of Brooklyn because they lack a lot of defense and there's a lot of questions. That's still Kevin Durant over there, so I understand the fear, but I wouldn't pick Brooklyn in any first-round series that they could wind up being in. Hmm. Um, Michael and I had a uh, discussion earlier about coaches that may have their pick of jobs, that have mm. options. Okay. A coach is only as faithful as his options. And I contend that the Los Angeles Lakers job would <clears> not <throat> and should not be appealing to any coach that's worth a damn that has options. I've seen Nick Nurses, you just mentioned him. I've seen his name mentioned as a target. Doc Rivers, Quinn Snyder. Hell no. I mean, let, go, go, you tell, hey, Vinny, you got your ear to the street. You know all these coaches, you know the assistants. <laughs> am, am I tripping? I get it's the Lakers. I get they got a whole series on HBO devoted to their heyday. I get it. It's the big, it's, it's Hollywood. Man, please, I don't want no parts of that job. I mean, do you realize the check that you can get when you jump from being the first assistant to a head coach? Like, like you will, you will get paid with for the options. headaches. That's the, okay. I'm saying with coach, a, a high profile coach. I'm not talking about like up and comer. I'm talking about some okay. of these star coaches, these established coaches, Doc, Nurse, Snyder. I'm saying none mm -hmm. of them would leave a place that's functional, especially a Toronto type place, to go and be a part of the Lakers dysfunctional family. Well. When I look at the Raptors, I look at it like this. Nick Nurse is under contract for a long time after this year, which would require compensation. That, that compensation means draft picks. You know one thing the Lakers don't have? Draft picks. You know one thing the Lakers are going to have to give up to trade Russell Westbrook? Draft picks. So let's just move that name out of it right now because that doesn't make sense. If you're Doc Rivers, do you want to leave the nonsense that you've got to deal with in Philadelphia with everything there? and then go to L.A. again, although you're doing it for the marquee franchise. I don't know if that's a desirable job if you've got the pick of the litter, but if you want to have a quick landing, if you don't want to sit for too long, if you want to get fired and you know that the way that this coaching cycle goes, that you could easily wind up being a guy that is a hot commodity in a year to being forgotten about if you're not in a TV booth 12 months later, you might go just to keep your name hot in the streets. And there's no better place to be hot in the streets than in Los Angeles. Like, if you're Quinn Snyder and you get knocked out in the first round, you tell me where else you're going to go. And and I know in, in the, the, the cross between... Does he get fired? Uh, one and two. 
like real quick, does he get fired if if, if they lose in the first round? Is like, is he on the hot seat in Utah? I don't know if he's on the hot seat, but he's on alert. I think he's on notice that if it looks bad, especially when you got Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, and he had that 19 minute soliloquy where he looked like a Spider Man villain, you know, in a bulletproof vest, you know, talking about every, you know, talking about how we got the numbers wrong, the media, you know, and everything else. That looked a little, that looked a little weird to me. Usually when coaches come out there, don't protest too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you put a little kerosene yeah. on the fire. And and before we even leave the Lakers, here's my thing. Rob Palinka, right maybe an hour ago, right after he fired uh, Frank Vogel and was asked, you know, hey, look, the, the, is Frank to blame for this, essentially? And Rob Palinka said, now is not the time to talk about this. And as a veteran of not being in relationships, <laughs> there is one thing that I know is is the surefire answer that makes all the sense in the world in your head, but does not make sense in the world when you say it out loud. It is, this ain't the time to talk about this. We can talk when about this time? later. When <laughs> is the time? If not now, when? If not you, who? Like I said, you guys tell me how you deal with the um, now is not the time to have this discussion thing, because I feel like y'all need to give some advice to Rob Palenka, or he's going to be doing the magic. <laughs> he's going to be doing the magic. Uh, I'm not going to be here in about in about nine months if he don't get this right. Yeah, it's always a time. It's the time to talk about it. You might as well talk about it. If you say this is not the time to talk about it, you just made the situation 10 times worse than it needs to be. That's what I've learned. Michael Smith. I don't know about you, but let me ask you this. Vinny, you said this. You said the Lakers are a marquee franchise. I agree with you. Michael Smith doesn't. <clears throat> Do you think this franchise that won the bubble championship in 2020, but has missed the playoffs a bunch in the last dozen years? Do you still think that they are a marquee franchise? Absolutely. I never said I never see. <clears throat> have I done that uh -oh. to you before? I've done that to you before, Michael. I've done that. I've done that to you. I know I, you told me that I've done that to you before, huh? You said you you, you said and I, I guess I, I got to taste my own medicine. You said that I mischaracterized something you said for purposes of effect before, right? I've done <clears> that, right? What'd you so what'd you say? I did you not say, say they weren't a marquee franchise. That would be dumb. I said the job is not what'd always cracked up to be. I said the job's not always cracked up to be. I was like, that's what they're selling you on literally the marquee. They're <laughs> selling you on Hollywood. They're selling you on L.A. They're selling you on movie stars. They're selling you on all, on the history, the prestige, the rafters, the the all of that but, stuff. But you said but functionally, but you said that stuff doesn't it's matter. Not an, it doesn't it's matter not a right desirable now. job. That's what I'm saying. It's not okay, a desirable that, okay, job okay. for someone right. with options. So, yeah, yeah. All right, let's 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 meet in the middle. Do you think the job that's, is yeah. desirable? I I do think it, I do think the job is reasonably desirable because some people will say, you know. Not to go another relationship analogy, but if you see no, a fine woman and she if she keeps breaking up on. with dudes every six months, but she's hey, fine as all get out. It's her. Something wrong with like, her. Red flag. That's they do on is Twitter. It, <laughs> is it? If Halle Berry keeps breaking up with dudes, you gonna not date Halle Berry? You gonna think that she's crazy? Or you gonna say, man, Holly Berry. <laughs> or, 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 or I would love to at least get on the ride for six months and get something out of the deal and find out for myself. Well, here's the question. Here's the question. Let me speak your language. Here's the question. Is Kelly Rowland available? Is there, are there, are there, are there comparable opportunities? So it's like, if, unless there's just one job oh, and that's the only job okay. I can get and it happens to be somebody who didn't been through five, six people and I'm just tired of being alone. Al Green. Be careful. Then, with yeah, you, be careful with your then answer, Vinny. Vinny. Then I know I'll he's take really the job. Your language. But if I, I know if really I got options and it's like Holly, you know what I mean? Then no, I'm not going with the one with a questionable track record of what four coaches in the last seven years or whatever ridiculous numbers it is. It is for this marquee franchise. I'm gonna give no you stability. a quote. I'm gonna give you a quote before I go into my answer that I think you can appreciate. <laughs> as soon as you said, as soon as you said Kelly Rowland, I went to this line. That's not a that's a that's not a shadow of a nipple. That's a nipple because I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's right. when you said right. Kelly Rowland. Right. That's what, that, that's what right. I want. That the bo boomerang reference, y'all. Boomerang reference. But yeah. no, yeah. no. I, I I think Frank Vogel wasn't the, on the top of anybody's list when he took the Lakers job. He was going to mm -hmm. be an assistant to Ty Lue, right? And I don't think that Ty Lue or Monty Williams or any of the top coaches this year that you could consider for coach of the year would have made that better. Now, if you feel like you can walk in there 
and say, hey, they can't, it can't get any worse. You tried the Russell Westbrook experience. You know that LeBron can't stay upright for 82 games. You've long known that Anthony Davis can't stay upright for 82 games. You're walking in thinking this organization knows more about itself and the roster and the team that you don't have to tell them. So you're not going to go through the pain that some of these other guys went through beforehand. The other part of it is this. If there is a team that does not give a damn about who the coach is, it is the Los Angeles Lakers. They told Pat mm-hmm. Riley to go. They told Phil Jackson mm-hmm. to go twice. They told Ty Lue, nah, we straight. They tell everybody everything, and it's from the top down that they don't think that the coach is that important. If you have stars, if you have LeBron, Magic, Kareem, whomever, are you prepared to walk into that situation knowing that in a league where coaching matters, but we treat it as if it doesn't, that it really doesn't matter in this space? I think that's the greater question of all is that not necessarily the organizational you know, stability and everything else, but the organizational ethos that goes from the bus family on down. Hey, listen, Vinny, only in the multiverse, only in the multiverse is there a world in which Kelly Rowland and Halle Berry are available at the same time. So Michael Smith bringing that up, that's just not, that's not realistic. It's just not going to happen. I I can't, I can't see it. Uh, Let me ask you this though. Uh, Would you trade LeBron? He does not have a trade, uh, a no trade clause. Would you trade him? That's such a blanket question. Like who would take LeBron? at this stage of his career with the games that he's played. Not necessarily take him like he's undesired. Who would give up enough? Four, who would four, give up four enough? Four or five contenders. Four or five, four or five teams would. I bet. Four or five. Would they, okay, would it, they mortgage okay. their future for him, though, Vinny? I, I don't know, because I don't know if getting LeBron guarantees you a championship. And because right. of all the things you have to do to accommodate LeBron James, because of his historic stature, because of the fact that he does require a lot. He is a high-maintenance star. I don't know if it's necessarily worth it for the amount of money that he's going to take up on your salary cap, for the amount of help that he's going to need, for maybe the lack of acknowledgement on his part that he can no longer carry a team but will take up that much oxygen in the room. If you're talking about contenders, we're talking about we're talking about Miami, Milwaukee, Brooklyn, when they're right and healthy and fully formed and everything else. And then you're talking about Phoenix and Golden State or or some form of that. I mean, what team has room for him where you don't have to trade your younger superstar for his old ass superstar and not be guaranteed anything. So if you're the Lakers and you've shown no ability to be competent other than getting LeBron James when Magic Johnson was there and everything that came with LeBron and clutch sports and all that, you haven't shown the ability to be competent. So why would you trade him when he's a de facto member of your front office and or recruiting team? So I don't know if I trust the Lakers to get it right because we saw what it looks like for the past six or seven years in between 2010 and 2018 when they could not win a playoff series after or win a playoff series of consequence after that last championship. All right, Van, we appreciate you, man. Hey, before we let you go real quick on the way out, um, play in picks so we can fill out. We can fill out the rest of this bracket and we'll break down the series with you later in the week. Who you got? Who you got winning the playing games? Seven and eight seed conference. Bro, I think I think I got Brooklyn and Atlanta in the East, and I have New Orleans and the Clippers beating Minnesota. I give I give Tyloo in the one game series. I'm gonna give so Tyloo got, that. So you got so wait, you got Clippers at eight or seven, excuse me, and then you got the Pelicans beating the T-Wolves. So the Timberwolves, you got them, you got them knocked out. No, the Timberwolves would wind up playing the Pelicans for that AC. That 9 10 the Pelicans will the right to right. No, no, no. No, you the got Pelicans the Pelicans up playing Minnesota. No, I think Minnesota. Oh, okay, no, you said the okay. you said New Orleans. That's why that's why I was confused. By. Yeah, I said I said New okay. Orleans beat San Antonio to advance to the next. Oh, state. oh, I got you. I got you. I got right. you. Okay, and so that's so 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 it is LA 7 Minnesota 8 in the yep. West and in yep. the East Brooklyn 7 it, Brooklyn 7 Atlanta 8 Atlanta 8. I believe. I believe they beat Cleveland. Okay, cool. We'll see you again later this week, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate y'all. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.